My top 10 tips for the London Marathon coming up. Welcome to the channel. My name is Ben Parks, 225 marathon runner, coach and ultra runner as well, four time veteran of the London Marathon. And today I want to bring you my top 10 tips for how to get around the London Marathon in the best way possible and get you the time that you deserve. So without further ado, let's get going. So welcome to the video. The first port of call for many people is gonna be visiting the Excel Centre in London, where you need to come to register and pick up your number. And if you don't come here, you don't pick up your number, then they're not gonna let you start the race. So it's vitally important to plan out time to come here. So I put the opening hours uh, that the uh, run show is on up on the screen now. So if you do live in and around London, I'd really recommend coming down here on the Wednesday or Thursday. It gets really, really busy on the weekend with the amount of international people and people all around the country coming down that want to register on the Saturday um, and the Friday as well. So yeah, get down here nice and early. There's loads of stands to go and have a look around. All the big running brands are here, uh, trying to sort of sell you their new gear. And most importantly, by all means buy some new gear, get stuck in and see what is going on. But really, you do not want to be using that on race day. Only use your tried and tested stuff for the race. So I'd really recommend giving yourself about two to three hours down here to have a good look around. There's lots of experts to meet. There's lots of presentations and talks. In the booklet you get sent out a few days before, they'll give a whole breakdown of all the talks that are going on. It really is a massive expo with so much information and stuff to take on board. There's also some massages there for really sort of inexpensive, about 10 or 15 pounds to give your legs that last and get them nice and refreshed ready for the race as well. So most importantly, remember, you've got to print out your confirmation email and also bring along some photo ID to pick your number up. If for some reason you can't get down to the expo, then they do have a procedure in place for you to assign somebody else that can come down to pick up your number. So I'll put a link down below um, for some more information on that there. So yeah, have fun, get stuck in, meet some people, come down with your friends and get stuck in at the expo. So welcome to the iconic Greenwich Park. You'll get here hopefully nice and early. Now the start time for the marathon is 10 a.m. That's when the elites and um, sort of the faster people will be going off. But for some of the more charity runners, it's gonna take quite a long time to cross the start line. But that doesn't mean you don't wanna get here nice and early. For me, I like to get here about half past eight uh, to nine o'clock in the morning so I can get here, get nice and loosened up, go on a few little sort of kilometer or so, just little warm up runs and get everything nice and loose. And of course, the main reason for getting here nice and early is to get in the queue for the loos. Now, I really would recommend bringing your own loo paper as well there are hundreds of loos here on the start line but everybody comes here there's a lot of nervous energy going around people have been drinking too much water and things in the build-up so yeah there are going to be some long queues for those toilets also it's just good to get here to take in the atmosphere you've been training for this for the last few months the big day is here and it's good to get out chat to people around you and really soak it all up so as you will have read, there are three different start lines at the marathon. There's the blue start, the green start, and the red start. Everyone on the red start will be coming here into the park, and the start line is just around the corner from me here. So yeah, you'll be able to tell what start line you're on based on your bib. The, the number on your bib will be in a particular color, and that will be the start line that you're on. So if you're heading to the red start, really recommend going to Greenwich Station or Cutty Sark DLR. If you're heading to the to the Blue Start, Blackheath Station, or the Green Heart, Green Start, then Mays Hill Station. There's free travel uh, for everybody running the marathon from the London terminals on the trains out to the start line. And finally, most importantly, don't forget to attach your timing chip to your shoe. When you're at the expo, you'll be given your little timing chip and of course your number as well with the safety pins onto your vest. Get there nice and early, get those pinned down nice and tight and then you're ready to go. So here we are now on Blackheath where all of the three start lines are. So when you get here, you're gonna be want to checking in your bag. Now, when you're at the expo, they will give you a see-through sort of polythene bag to put all of your kit in. That is the bag that you need to bring to the start line and also make sure that you've attached the sticker to the side of that bag before handing it on the lorry. Once you do hand it on the lorry, you're not gonna be able to get that back off them. 
So I'd really recommend bringing a sort of like a bin bag or like an old sort of item of clothing that you don't mind discarding at the start as well, just to keep you warm in that sort of half an hour or so between dropping your bag off at the truck and the start line of the race. So here we are back down in the centre of Greenwich, which marks the 10k point on the course. Now one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give to any marathon runner is not going off too fast. Now during the opening sort of 10k of the London Marathon route, most of it is very, very flat with one significant sort of downhill point in Woolwich. So a lot of people tend to pick up a little bit of pace there. But yeah, keep onto your pace, look at your GPS watch and keep everything nice and steady. Don't go off too fast in all of the excitement. I'd also recommend downloading a PDF uh, map of the course off the website and then you can sort of study it and see where various things are on the course. There are six showers actually on the course, so if it's a really hot day, you might want to run through some of these showers that you can run through, they cool you down really nicely. And of course, the really important, there's uh, toilets throughout the whole route. Um, approximately every two miles, there'd be big blocks of port in case you need to go during the race. So here we are at the iconic Cutty Sark boat in the middle of Greenwich. Now this marks the first point on the course where you're really going to notice some massive crowds. So what I really recommend is put your name across your shirt, get your felt tips out or sort of whatever it takes is to get your name on your shirt there and take in all the support. You know high fives as you're running through, thank people in the crowd and just yeah some hands in the air and really give it some big support and show your appreciation for everybody to come out and support you on the course. The support on the course is like, like nothing else I've ever known of all the marathons I've ever done. So take in all the atmosphere, get your name on your shirt and have some fun. So we're at Tower Bridge, halfway through the London Marathon and also halfway through this video. So if you're new to the channel, you like the kind of content, please subscribe down below, hit the button down there. Yeah, and a like and yeah, have you got anything you want to know about the London Marathon? Let me know down in the comments and I'll get back to you there. Right, let's crack on with the tip. So here we are at Tower Bridge, maybe the most famous point on the London Marathon course. The atmosphere going across here is just out of this world. So make sure you take a few minutes just to still almost stop and just slow down going across here. If time's not that important to you and take it in, it is incredible. And yeah, on pacing, well, there are various pacing groups out on the course, ranging from about three hours up to, I think, about six hours. There'll be paces provided by Runners World who come out and do amazing pacing jobs. So if you're trying to go for a particular time, you can always stick in with them. They've got massive uh, big banners sticking out their back. I'll put some photos on the screen now of what they look like and they'll guide you around the course in the exact time that you're looking for. And also throughout the route, there will be mile markers, obviously every mile that you go. So you can always sort of check in with your watch and make sure you're on pace for each mile that you go through. With kilometers, they're every five kilometers throughout the route. Um, all the way up to 40k. A little side note, there isn't a mile marker at 26 for some reason. So after 25, well, the next point you see will be the finish line. Here we are at Mudgee, which is around about 17 miles into the race. So if you haven't by now, you're probably going to want to grab a drink, but hopefully you've been fueling properly from the start. So for drinks on the course, well, they're every single mile. So you shouldn't need to take any extra sort of water and fluids with you. Of course, if you're worried, I'm not going to say don't, but you really should be, there should be enough out on the course for you to have some as you go. So for water stations, they are every single mile between miles three all the way up to miles 25. Additionally on the course, they give out some Lucozay Sport energy drink. So you can get that at 7, 11, 15, 19 and at 23 miles into the race. So whether you're taking on water or Lucozade, they come in um, sort of 250 milliliter bottles with a sports cap. So you can run with those, you can get it from the A station and carry on running with it. So it's really good and sort of saves a bit of time as well. Now that is apart from the ace agents at miles 19, 10 and 23 as well, where they have where they have compostable cups. Just trying to be a bit more eco, which is a lot of the way the races are going to reduce plastic waste. So here we are at Canary Wharf, which is about 19 to 20 miles into the run. Now, as you'll see behind me, there's massive skyscrapers all around here, and that's going to cause a few issues if you're using GPS on your watch. 
more than likely it's going to throw you a couple of dodgy splits through here because it just loses the signal from the satellites. Nothing really we can do about that in reality, but we've just got to know that it's more than likely to happen. So as always when we run these marathons it's impossible to run exactly 26.2 miles or 42.2 kilometers. We can't follow the exact line in the road, the, cra you know, the crowds and everything is very busy and things like this will throw out your watch as well. So a lot of this what I was saying is run on feel. You can get pacing bands at the expo and sort of as you go through each of the mile markers or kilometer markers out there, you'll get a feel of what sort of pace you should be on. So through here and throughout the whole thing, run on feel, practice your marathon pace um, because yeah, your watch can't be solely relied on. So here we are nearly at the end of the run. We're on embankment here, which is about 25 miles into the race. You're going to be going past the London Eye, I just forgot the name there, and of course the iconic, although not looking so great today, Big Ben behind me, which is undergoing a lot of refurbishment at the moment. So if you've made it this far, your fueling strategy is probably going to be going well. So gels on the course, well there's two points where you can get some Lucas A gels. They're at 14 miles and 21 and a half miles into the race. Now another golden rule with all marathon running is don't try anything new on race day. So if you want to take those gels in during the run, then I'd recommend trying to find some of the Lucas A gels and try them out in your training. And yeah, whatever you're training with, that's the gels that you should use on race day. Practice, practice, practice on all of your training runs and take those gels around with you on the course. So here we are at the finish, the finish of the video and obviously the finish of the London Marathon outside where our Queen lives in Buckingham Palace. So you'll have been through an amazing journey to get here all across London and just seeing some amazing sights, amazing crowds and being around a bunch of amazing other runners as well. So the final thing I'd say is just get out there and enjoy the day. I know it's super stressful, you're going through all the training at the moment, but come race day, we're just out there having fun. Remember, this is just a hobby. We're not, our lives don't depend on it, our careers don't depend on it. It's just for a bit of fun. Enjoy the day. It's a day that changed my life forever. I don't think I can actually do this. It will be an amazing day that you'll remember for the rest of your life. It changed my life forever when I was 18 years old, crossing the finish line just down here. And yeah, it shaped the rest of my life doing what I do now and I'm getting a bit emotional. But yeah, you know, just give it your all, give it your absolute best. Whether you win or you come last, it really doesn't matter. And get out there, enjoy the day and give it your all. So there we have it guys. They're my top 10 tips for running the London Marathon. Really hope you got something useful out of that. And if you've got any sort of questions or any comments, any things that you've found really helpful when running the London Marathon, then let me know down in the comments below. I'll do my best to try and get back to everybody down there. So I'll see you down there. If you like this kind of video, then a like uh, as well really helps build the channel. And of course, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I've also got my brand new running hats available on the website. So I'll put those down below, a link down below those. Well, really good for running the London Marathon in a great hat like this. And finally, we've got all the training plans and coaching support on the website as well. So check that out and get in touch if you want some help. So without further ado, I'm gonna wish you so much luck with your London Marathon. Let me know your stories. Let me know how you get on. Have a great day out there, enjoy it and have fun. And I will see you in the next one.